Howdy folks, this is Checkers back again. Well, with something different, but something we've done a little bit of before. Mount and Blade Bannerlord. Mount and Blade 2 Bannerlord. I think I always forget that too. This isn't the new series that I was talking about a little while ago, but it is something that I've been meaning to do. Something that I had forgotten about. Uh, my memory as I may have mentioned, is more damaged than I would like because I forgot this and I love this. So I would like to share my love of a Mount and Blade with you. So we are going to start a new campaign. Alrighty, now we get to pick a culture. Now I think our first try was the Asarai. They are the inhabitants of the Nahasa Desert. And I like them, but I also like the Kuzates. If I'm, I'm thinking these were the, oh, I think they were the Serenids and the Kergits. Or they will be in the future. Anyway, I believe this is set prior to Mount and Blade Warband and Mount and Blade. Um, but I kind of want to try the Kuzate. It says here, the Kuzate confederation of a steppe tribes used to live a nomadic life but have recently settled in the eastern frontier of the empire and are slowly transitioning into an agrarian society with permanent town centers despite this they still retain many aspects of their nomadic life including their affinity with horses they are masters of mounted archery shooting and then galloping out of reach 10% extra speed bonus for horsemen on the campaign map. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure who anyone else is. In general, I tended to really stick to these two in Warband and Prior. Um, but let's just take a quick look. Vlandians. Um, I'm looking for cavalry. I'm a fan of the cavalry. Less speed penalty from the snow. I'm guessing maybe the Nords. Although the Empire, the idea of a crumbling Empire is really attractive to me. Um, what does it say about them? The Cal Calradian Empire is in decline. Even before the murder of the Emperor Aren Arenikos, the once united realm was torn by political rivalries. Today, these factions are in open war. Yet Calradians endure. They are technologically more advanced than their neighbors, and their mastery of engineering is not just evident in their aqueducts, beautiful architecture, and massive city walls. It also makes them experts in siege warfare. 20% construction speed bonus to town projects, wall repairs, and siege engines. Huh. All right. I could see trying to be a member of a crumbling empire. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see. Forests give 10% sp less speed penalty to parties. Ooh, this actually would be a big deal. Um, the Batanians, Batanians maybe, still remember the olden days when the woods stretched across northern Calradia and the empire and its cities had yet to violate their sanctity. The fierce warriors remain loyal to their traditional ways. They paint their faces when going to battle, and even their noblemen prefer to fight on foot while using great axes and two-handed swords with deadly efficiency. That sounds kind of fun, but I love me my horses. Um, hmm. What was the Crusade bonus? 10% extra speed on the campaign map. That actually is a big deal, especially when you're chasing someone down. There's no mention to whether or not the Calradians prefer uh, horses or not. Well, let's give the Kuzates a whirl. And who knows, maybe we'll try the Empire sometime as well. I mean, we can recruit from pretty much anyone, as long as we don't recruit too many different um, nationalities. That tends to make things fractious in your army anyway. Moving on, uh, sure. Um, do you got facial fur? Cause you kind of need it, man. 
Um, I mean, you need clothes too. Don't get me wrong. Alrighty. Um, if I were going to make, ooh, okay, good. Um, ah, clothing. Clothing always works. Oh, we either have it or we don't. Well, that is quite a pull. All right. Anyway, um, sure. There we go. You were born into a family of annoyance kinsfolk, which means what? Your family were the trusted kinsfolk of a Kuzate Noyan and shared his meals in the chief chieftain's yurt. Your father assisted his chief in running the affairs of the clan and fought in the corps of armored lancers in the center of the Kuzate battle line. So, military history. Merchants. Wow, dad's blinged out. Your family came from one of the merchant clans that dominated the cities in eastern Calradia before the Kuzate conquest. They adjusted quickly to their new masters, keeping the caravan routes running and ensuring the tariff revenues that once went into imperial coffers now flowed to the Khanate. Tribes people. Your family were middle-ranking members of one of the Kuzate clans. He had some herds of his own, but was not rich. When the Kuzate horde was summoned to battle, he fought with the horse archers, shooting and wheeling and wearing down the enemy before the lancers delivered the final punch. Oh, I'm not even looking at the bonuses. Uh, ten skill level and one focus point to riding and polearm. One attribute to or one attribute point to endurance. Ten skill level and one focus point to trade and charm. One attribute point to social. Tribes people. Ten skill level and one focus point to bow and riding. One attribute point to control. Farmers, your family tilled one of the small patches of arable land in the steppes for generations. When the Kuzates came, they ceased paying taxes to the Emperor and providing conscripts for his army, and served the Khan instead. Ten skill level and one focus point to polearm and throwing. One attribute point to vigor. Shamans, ooh. Your family were guardians of the sacred traditions of the Kuzates, channeling the spirits of the wilderness and of the ancestors. They tended the sick and dispensed wisdom, resolving disputes and providing practical advice. Ten skill level and one focus point to medicine and charm, one attribute point to intelligence. And nomads. Your family's clan never pledged its loyalty to the Khan and never settled down, preferring to live out in the deep step, away from his authority. They remain some of the finest trackers and scouts in the grasslands, as the ability to spot an enemy coming and move quickly is often all that protects their herds from their neighbor's predations. Ten skill level and one focus point to scouting and riding, one attribute point to cunning. Ooh, I was really set on shamans there, but that last bit is really attractive. Um, hmm. You know what, nomads, it is. Oh my. Baby me, I guess. As a child, you were noted for your leadership skills, which gives you 10 skill level and one focus point to leadership and tactics, one attribute point to cunning, your brawn, 10 skill level and one focus point to two-handed and throwing, one attribute point to vigor, your attention to detail, 10 skill level and one focus point to athletics and one-handed, one attribute point to control. What is control? Ah, control. Represents the ability to use strength without sacrificing precision. It's necessary for using ranged weapons. Ah. Your aptitude for numbers. Ten skill level and one focus point to engineering and trade. One attribute point to intelligence. Um... Your way with people, 10 skill level and one focus point to charm and leadership, one attribute point to social, ability to understand people's motivations and to sway them, and skill with horses, 10 skill level and one focus point to riding and medicine, one attribute point to endurance. Hmm. So you could actually, if we went back, 
we could do say like merchants which would give you trade and charm or shaman which would give you medicine and charm and then if we did way with people we would have even more points here in charm your ability to make a person like and trust you you can make a good guess at people's motivations and the kinds of arguments to which they will respond interesting but i think i still want to go with a no oh you know the shot oh we went a little too far back just flashing the people there checkers that's what you do shamans are nomads wow that's this is i love the choices all right um medicine knowledge of how to staunch bleeding how to set broken bones how to remove embedded weapons mm. And clean wounds to prevent infection and to apply poultices to relieve pain and soothe inflammation. Yeah. Whereas here we have the ability to control a horse, keep your balance when it moves suddenly or unexpectedly, as well as general knowledge of horses, including their care and the breeding. Scouting, knowledge of how to scan the wilderness for life. You can follow track, spot movement in the undergrowth, and spot an enemy across the valley from a flash of light on a spear point or a dust cloud. This is really a tougher choice than I would imagine. All right, let's go with nomads here. We're at way with people here. How did we get a point in? Oh, no, right, nomads. Skill with horses would give us that medicine point. But we would lose social here. Leadership is the ability to inspire. You can fill individuals with confidence and stir up enthusiasm and courage in larger groups. Basically, how many people you can have in your army, I'm guessing. So let's stay with way with people. Now, in our adolescence, like all village children, you helped out in the fields. You also herded sheep. 10 skill level, 1 focus point to athletics and throwing, 1 attribute point to control. Worked in the village smithy, 10 skill level and 1 focus point to two-handed and smithing, 1 attribute point to vigor. Repaired projects, 10 skill level and 1 focus point to smithing and engineering. I would really like to get into the smithing. 1 attribute point to intelligence. Gathered herbs in the wild, 10 skill level, and one focus point to medicine and scouting, one attribute point to endurance. Hunted small game, 10 skill level, and one focus point to bow and tactics, one attribute point to control. Sold produce at the market, 10 skill level, and one focus point to trade and charm, one attribute point to social. And charm was getting people to do things we wished, but repaired projects... Mm. I kind of want to explore the smithing, so let's go with that. We were nomads. There weren't anyone else around to explore. I actually did like tearing things apart when I was a kid and sort of trying to put them together. As a youngster growing up in Calradia, war was never too far away. You trained with the cavalry, 10 skill level and 1 focus point to riding and pole arm, 1 attribute point to endurance. Stood guard with the garrisons, 10 skill level and 1 focus point to bow and engineering, 1 attribute point to intelligence. The earlier games really loved intelligence, so I kind of wonder. But anyway, let's see. Road with the scouts, 10 skill level and 1 focus point to riding and bow, 1 attribute point to endurance. Hmm. Trained with the infantry, 10 skill level and 1 focus point to pole arm and one handed, 1 attribute point to vigor, being representing the ability to move with speed and force, it's important for melee combat, so it wouldn't really break anyone's heart, 1 handed and pole arm. Joined the skirmishers. 10 skill level and 1 focus point to throwing and 1 handed, 1 attribute point to control. So here we would get throwing, so probably javelins, perhaps other things. And 1 handed marched with the camp followers. You avoided service with one of the main forces of your realm's armies, but followed instead in the train the troops' wives, lovers, and servants, and those who make their living by caring for, entertaining, 
or cheating the soldiery. Ten skill level and one focus point to roguery and a throwing one attribute point to cunning. So do the garrisons is focus to bow and engineering. Which one is engineering? Ah, down here under intelligence. Knowledge of how to make things that can withstand powerful forces without collapsing. Useful for building both structures and the devices to knock them down. So, siege weapons. Um, scouts was riding and bow. Infantry was one-handed and polearm. Skirmishers was throwing and one-handed. Throwing is more interesting than it might seem. Hmm. Three into control. And cavalry was riding and polearm, but not so much the one-handed. Uh, although that would be two points here into the riding. Bow and riding. I'm not actually too sure how the skills work. I haven't really played this. As I said, I sort of forgot. Sorry about that for both of us. Um, Polearm and one-handed to vigor. Infantry or skirmishers. Control. Hmm. Vigor is the melee combat, which still wouldn't really break our heart. It's going to have to be done. So basically, we can get three points in everything but two. It's just which two we sacrifice. Riding and polearm. I, you know, in the end, I think we can probably... I don't really have immediate need for engineering, I think. Right of the scouts. I kind of wish there was a little bit of riding in this one, but there is... No, actually, no, there's not. I thought the skirmishers, maybe, but this is throwing in one-handed versus polearm in one-handed. And camp followers. We haven't really done anything with the roguery or cunning, although we'd be up to four in that. So we'd sacrifice... We'd only have three with... Okay, da 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 so. Cavalry was riding in polearm. You know what? Let's give this a whirl. And next... Oh my, there's still more. Before you set out for a life of adventure, your biggest achievement was you defeated an enemy in battle. Oh my. Ten skill level and one focus point to one-handed and two-handed. One attribute point in vigor, plus one to valor, plus twenty to renown. You led a successful manhunt. When your community needed to organize a posse to pursue horse traders, you were the obvious choice. You hunted down the raiders, surrounded them, enforced their surrender, and took back your stolen property. Ten skill level and one focus point to tactics and leadership. One attribute point to cunning is the ability to predict what other people will do and to outwit their plans. Plus one to calculating. Where's calculating? No, really. Scouting tactics, roguery, trade, leadership, charm, writing, smithing. What is calculating? Um, hmm. I don't have an answer for that. You invested some money in land. Ten skill level, one focus point to trade and smithing. There's smithing again. Plus one in intelligence would also be attractive. Again, calculating. And a ten renown. This was invested in land. You hunted a dangerous animal. Ten skill level and one focus point to bow and crossbow. One attribute point to control. Plus five to renown. You, you had a famous escapade in town. I have to see the flavor text. Maybe it was a love affair. Or maybe you cheated at dice. Or maybe, maybe just chose your words poorly when drinking with a dangerous crowd. 
Anyway, on one of your trips into town, you got into the kind of trouble from which only a quick tongue or quick feet get you out alive. Ten skill level and one focus point to athletics and roguery, one attribute point to endurance, plus one to valor, plus five to renown. I wonder what valor is. Hmm. You treated people well. Ten skill level and one focus point to charm and a steward, one attribute point to social, plus one to mercy, generosity, and honor, plus five renown. Interesting. There is... I think in this one, what does it say for our flavor text? Yours wasn't the kind of reputation that local legends are made of, but it was the kind that wins you respect among those around you. You were consistently fair and honest in your business dealings and helpful to those in trouble. In doing so, you got a sense of what made people tick. Charm. Charm was getting things to do, people to do the things we wished. Steward. What was steward? Steward. Your knowledge of what makes a settlement prosper. This helps you to manage an estate or administer a town. I don't know what the plus one to mercy, generosity, and honor mean. So one-handed and two-handed. One to vigor. One to valor and 20 renown. So we'd be more famous. Successful manhunt. Tactics and leadership. Leadership is nothing to sneeze at. That's almost guaranteed a bigger army right there. Um, cunning, ability to predict right. Okay, invested in some land. Trade and smithing. I really would like to try the smithing. Where did smithing go? Up here. One attribute point to intelligence, one to calculating and ten to renown. Your parents didn't give you much money, but they left you just enough for you to purchase a plot of unused land at the edge of the village. You cleared away rocks and dug an irrigation ditch, raised a few seasons of crops, then sold it for a considerable profit. Trade and smithing. Intelligence. Hmm. A dangerous animal bow and a crossbow. Escapade. This one struck me as quite funny. Uh, athletics. Physical fitness, speed, and balance. Roguery. Experience with the darker side of human life. You can tell when a guard wants a bribe. You know how to intimidate someone and have a good sense of what you can and can't get away with. And treated people well. Hmm... Actually, I could. Uh, and that's always the problem, looking between the statistics and what you feel is right. So I like the money and land, which calculating doesn't really show for us, but we would get a point in intelligence, giving us four instead of three. The escapade strikes me as a bit funny. We'd get one to endurance. Nothing really in vigor or control. Treated people well. You know what? I'm going to go with that one. It's just what I feel I should do. Next, choose your story background. Like many families in Calradia, your life was upended by war. Your home was ravaged by the passage of army after army. Eventually, you sold your property and set off with your father, mother, brother, and your two younger siblings to a new town you'd heard was safer, but you did not make it. Along the way, the inn at which you were staying was attacked by raiders. Your parents were slain and your two youngest siblings seized. But you and your brother survived because you subdued a raider. Ten skill level, one focus point to one-handed, and athletics, one point to vigor. One-handed and athletics. That's actually not too bad. You drove them off with arrows. Ten skill level and one focus point to bow and tactics. Judgment of how troops will perform in contact. This allows you to make a good prediction of when an unorthodox tactic will work and when it won't. That's curious. Rode off on a fast horse. Ten skill level and one focus point to riding and scouting. 
one attribute point to endurance. That would kick riding up to three. Um, and scouting. Scouting is here. Knowledge of how you can scan the wilderness for life. You can follow tracks, spot movement in the undergrowth, and spot an enemy across the valley from a flash of light on spear points or a dust cloud. And trick the raiders. One ten skill level, one focus point to roguery and tactics, one attribute point to cunning. Or organized the travelers to break out. 10 skill level and one focus point to leadership and charm. Social up to five. You know, I don't kind of mind that. Let's see. You encouraged the few travelers in the inn to break out in a coordinated fashion. Raiders killed or captured most, but you and your brother were able to escape. Well, I think we're going for this one. Next. All right. Um, you prepared to set off with your brother on a mission of vengeance and rescue. Here is your character. Click finish if you are ready, or go back to make changes. We have a name we've earned through countless adventures. Being checkers, we get 10% extra speed bonus. Oh, that's nice. They show all of the things we just did. And then we say, next. All right. Yes, I am going to leave everything as a very easy because, well, one, I'm over 50 and I kind of like to relearn this without getting smeared across the grasslands. Two, I have an actual honest sword cut in my right hand, which runs the numeric keypad, pointing me in directions and making me go. So this is where we are right now. And if that's too easy, we'll fix it. And if it's too hard, we'll try and figure that out too. Um, clan member perks. Enables auto allocation of perks for members in your clan. I don't know what that means, so we won't do it. Um, all right. Off we go, like a herd of checkers. Nusun, brother. It's been three days now, and we've been tracking those bastards. I think we're getting close. We need to think about what happens when we catch them. How are we going to rescue Jatu and Alta? Are we up for a fight? This looks like an old training field for the legions. Perhaps we can spare some time to brush off our skills. The practice could come up useful when we catch up with the raiders. You know what, brother, you're right. I am going to run the course. I need to know if I can fight if I have to. Let's go on, then. Off like a herd of brother. Okay. Yeah, that's not how we move. We move with the numeric keypad. Uh, thanks. Enter the training area. Okay. Sword and shield. Um, how do I make it go? Oh, wait. There we go. I remember you have to hit it again to let go. Go to trainer. Hello, trainer. Uh, I don't know if I did that right or not. Attack from the left. Attack from the right. Attack from up. Attack from down. Hey! I did pretty good. All right, choose another weapon or go to another area. Let's try another weapon. Um, there we go. And release and back to trainer. I have a feeling this won't be so easy. Defend from the left. Uh, is that not right? Oh, you have to hold it. Okay. Gotcha. Nope. There we go. Attack from the left. Attack from the right. Attack from the up. Attack from the down. Attack from the down and actually hit him. Okay. Choose another weapon. Well, we I think we finished off his. He's melee. What are these guys? Uh, oh. This looks like probably the hardest. So we'll start out here and release. Go to the trainer. The fight will start. Oh, we're just going to go right there, huh? Okay, buddy. Ah! 
He's, he's out of range of my kick. Oh, that was a shield bash, not a kick. That was cool. Hey, can you just kind of swing wide like that again? Oh, that wasn't very nice, now was it? One of these days, I'm going to get a kick to land. Ooh, and then I'm going to win. All right, we have beaten the rookie trainer. Go to the veteran trainer. Hi there, veteran trainer. Hopefully that was the hardest one. All right, that's that one. Let's go for two-handed. Release and go to trainer. Hi, trainer. This is going to be much harder. for this one. All right, we're here. Well, I had more hope for that one than I thought. All right, let's get our sword and shield. Come on, buddy. Get the other guy involved. Probably can't, but... What? I was blocking. Finally, get that chorus line kick going. Did that guy look like death when he first came out? Like, I swear his face wasn't there. All right, here we go. Yes, raise your sword. Keep raising your sword. All right, the veteran trainer, at least... For me it was easier because he didn't have a shield all right we'll put your toys away no 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 i don't want to go through them again um i, I don't want to go through them again mm. fine we're going through them again didn't want to fight you again, buddy. So nobody said I would fight fair. Yeah. 
he gets that shield up way fast. I mean, don't get me wrong, I would too if I could. There we go. One down, one to go. Don't touch the weapons rack again, genius. How do I get to the horsies? Alright. Sorry. Did I do that again? Yeah, I can see where you'd find that frustrating. But, on the plus side, you're not gonna have to worry about it for very long. Alright, I don't know how I get to you, horse. I think I have to go back, so I probably could have just done that without going through them again. Sorry! Alright, so, this... I actually don't know. Nope, I don't know that we sprint. Or at least if we do, I don't know how. Alright, let's give the horsies a whirl. Um, sure. Uh, no, wait, what did I do? There we go. And release. And horse. And release. And... Nope, too high. Too wide. There we go. Oh, hi there. And... No. Okay. There we go. I'll take it. Long range? No. Nope. There we go. Whoa! Around that corner, horsey. Alrighty. We got this. There we go. Nope. There's the way I'm pointing, the way the horse is pointing. In through the door. No, but... Well... Apparently, I have a higher luck than I would uh, have imagined. Whoopsie, sorry, trainer. Trainer's like, that dude just won't leave off me. Alright, um, now let's bring her about. And, right. Okay, that's how we get off the horse. And, oh, I have one arrow left. Lucky me. Mounted spear training. Okay, oh, there's, there's the arrow I shot at the uh, guard. That's awesome. All right. No, that's not helping. Back on to horsey we go. And, uh, right, release. Some are sorry, horsey. And good thing it doesn't really stick to the ceiling as much as it looks like it would. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, missed, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, come about, fourteen, fifteen, Nope. 16. 17. 18. 19. 20. 21. All right, 21 of 23. Uh, uh, sorry, horse. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, sorry about that. Um, well, I passed at least. Okay, so... Mounted sword training. And release. And horse. And release. Alright. One. Two. Three. 
four, five. Nope. Six. No, that would have been a miracle. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. No, swung wide. No. Oh. No. Denied. There we go. There we go. No. Not unless you count bashing it with the horse. Oh, I'm doing much worse. Oh, well. There we go. Okay. Okay. Easy, easy horse. Okay. Okay. And so we've got ranged training now. And we take my sword and a shield as I pass through the gate. And we come here. The crossbow, bow, and let's start with javelins. They're going to be the trickiest. Hey, buddy. Thanks. That's really kind of you. No. Got one. Got two. Uh, let's guess maybe about there. Kentucky windage. Alright. I guess Kuzate elevation more. Alright. Nope. No. Oh, it's reloading me. So I didn't just end with one arrow the other time. Good to know. Okay, so next up, bow. And release. We get into position. No, ooh. Shoots flatter than I would have thought. No. Boy, I kind of wanted more. All right. Crossbow it is. And release. Okay, I'm not entirely sure how the crossbow goes. Probably very flat, but a bit of reload time. Ooh, look at that reload indicator. That was cool. Okay, so cock and place the bolt is what it's doing. Zombies beware. All right. A little bit faster with the crossbow. Probably because there were fewer targets. Alright, I think we have completed all the tutorials. Uh, for the moment, I think we will stop episode one here. Here. At the end of training. And we'll pick up again next time in episode two. For the moment, I would like to say thank you so much for joining me and brother over there and the grunting and growling trainers. Um, I hope you found it entertaining and interesting. I really found the uh, character creation fascinating and I love training things like this so I hope you had fun with that too. I would like to thank you so much for watching and uh, ask you to think of something something that cheers you up, something that brings you joy and uh, Really, it, it does help. Um, trust me, I know. Um, most of all, though, I would like to ask you to please, please stay safe and to take care.